Victor Wibanyama and the San Antonio Spurs are about to change the way that modern NBA basketball is being played. I feel like this man, Victor Wibanyama, has enough potential, enough, you know, difference than everybody else. He's seriously going to have an impact on the game, you know, likewise like Steph Curry with the three-point revolution. He's got some help. Devin Vassell is going to be an absolute monster, and Keldon Johnson He's going to kill him Johnson. He averaged about 23 a game this year. He's another good piece. So make sure you stick around for the full video. We're going to be talking about how the San Antonio Spurs will essentially break the NBA. Make sure to like button, leave me a comment down below, and hit the subscribe button as well as turning on post notifications as it really helps us out in the YouTube algorithm. And yes, everybody knows by now, Victor Robinyama is a spur. These signs have been all over San Antonio. Dudes are getting their hair cut with Victor Robinyama on the back. It's insane. Greg Popovich... Not only has drafted David Robinson and Tim Duncan now, but he will also get to draft Victor Webinyama. Now, the defensive potential with this team is insane. You talk about a guy in Jeremy Sohan that can defend one through five. You talk about a guy in Victor Webinyama that is seven foot five and can essentially dominate the boards in any shape of the imagination. Uh, and that's going to be your three and four man in some lineups with Devin Vassell at the two. You can even get experimental with it and move Jeremy Sohan to the point guard spot. And then Vassell's at the three, Keldon Johnson at the two with Victor Obinyama and Zach Collins. I mean, that's a lineup I feel like we will see deployed more than once this year by Greg Popovich because he has the tools. He can get funny with it. Uh, Trey Jones, also a good defender and a good young point guard, uh, young floor general. Tyus is having a good year or is having a good career, really. Um, Trey, I think he's going to follow in his footsteps. 13, 6.5, and 3.5 half, and and this year. You know, he's a very crafty young guard, um, and I feel like he's got a, a nice future in San Antonio. 46% from the field, 29% from three, and 1.6 steals this season. Now, um, going forward, they'll have to extend him. I'm not sure how much they're willing to give a guy like Trey Jones, a former second-round pick, that... Really, you know, the stats are inflated because they were horrible last year. But, you know, tank for Wibanyama. Got to do what you got to do. Um, but could Victor Wibanyama be better than LeBron James? That's the question. The GOAT prospect, I would have to say, his ceiling is higher than anything we've ever seen. Elite three-point shooter, can get to the rim, seven foot five, can finish over anyone. I mean, if he decides to pull up, you can't contest it. He averaged 21, 10, and 3 in the top French league this season. I mean, he's just, he has stuff that nobody else to touch a basketball ever has, which is a touch and a floor game at 7 foot 5. In three years, we're looking at a guy that could legitimately be the best offensive and defensive player in the NBA. And oh, by the way, he's got one of the greatest coaches of all time leading the way for his development. Now let's take a look at what is around him. Starting with Kelvin Johnson, who as I mentioned earlier, 22 points a game, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists. Although long term, I'm not sure if Kelvin Johnson really fits in with this Spurs team. He could be on the trading block before long. 45% from the field, 33% from 3 in 33 minutes per game this year. So yeah, no doubt, he had a good year. I would like to see him a little bit more efficient, but the efficiency was up from last year, and he's only 23 years old, so still plenty of room to improve. Now they've also got Devin Vassell, who has taken a leap every single year he's been in the NBA. This year he averaged 18.5 points, 4 rebounds, and 3.6 assists, and he also took a huge leap as a defender. This is a guy that I think, you know, some people were drawing the comparison to, Ky or to Kawhi Leonard. He can shoot it better than Kawhi, 44% from the field, but 39% from three, also 1.1 steals, and like I said, an elite perimeter defender. So you got those two guys surrounding Wimbenyama from you know, the time that he sets foot in San Antonio, and then a sleeper candidate for this year, a guy that I feel like could have a breakout going into his second year is Malachi Branham. He will be coming off the bench for the Spurs team, but he averaged 10.2 points, 2.7 rebounds, and 2.9 assists as a rookie, and those are very solid numbers. Again, I know the stats are a bit inflated because he was playing on, honestly, a horrific Spurs team last year. 44% from the field, 30% from three, 23 minutes a game. Brandon's a guy that, you know, you saw only 23 minutes. He averaged 10 points a game in those minutes. Definitely somebody that I'm looking at next year as, you know, 
somebody that's going to break out. He's got the, the Pro 36 numbers to back it up as well. So if you're looking for a breakout candidate on the Spurs, look no further than Malachi Branham this year. There are a couple of guys on this team as well that I look at as trade candidates. Now, both you can make the argument should stay in San Antonio because they are both good shooters. Um, and, you know, I could see that. But especially for Devontae Graham, he's on a long-term contract, and it's a bad one. Um, he's making $36 million over the next three years. Um, and then Doug McDermott is an expiring contract, so if you – you know, you, you play that out, maybe look to re-sign him in the offseason. But it wouldn't shock me if either of these guys get moved either in the offseason or at next year's trade deadline. Now, the Spurs have essentially unlimited cap space, $50 million in cap room. And it's looking like, you know, with Greg Popovich getting old, maybe they look to make a big splash. This is a Spurs team that, you know, hasn't really been aggressive in the offseason the last few years, ever since, like, the DeMar DeRozan situation. Could they be making a big move? I think so. They have lots of assets, um, as well as $50 million to spend in free agency. Looking at all these picks they have, um, they have Charlotte's lottery protected next year, as well as their own. 2025, they have their own Atlanta and Chicago's lottery protected first round pick. In 2026, they have their own in Atlanta, as well as in 2027. So, no shortage of draft picks in San Antonio right now. Um, so, you know, you package those together. You know, maybe that the Charlotte and the uh, Chicago picks aren't quite as valuable because they're lottery protected, but still, those are some picks there that you could get you could get some with, especially if you package them with somebody like a Keldon Johnson. Uh, taking a look at what the lineup is looking like next year, in my opinion, it's going to be Trey Jones, Keldon Johnson, Devin Vassell, Jeremy Sohan, and Victor Wibanyama. That's a fun lineup. However, you know, it could be much different. You could look at... Like I said earlier, Sohan at the one with Johnson, uh, Vassell, and then Wimby at the four with Zach Collins at the five. Honestly, I feel like Zach Collins is probably going to be the starting center, so maybe you pencil him in there. Uh, Wimby at the power forward because, you know, he, he's not, not quite ready for that NBA physicality at the center spot, maybe. Vassell, I feel like, is locked in. Vassell and Wimbanyama are the only two that are locked into the starting lineup. Trey Jones has a really good shot there, and Sohan and Keldon Johnson are kind of positionless. They can kind of play anywhere in the starting lineup or coming off the bench for you. So, you know, that, there you go. Looking at the bench now, um, not too much depth. I threw Ryan Rupert in there because you do have um, a pick later on in the draft that you could use and maybe Rupert who, you know, you could draft and develop. Maybe maybe he lands in San Antonio. But the two guys I talked about, maybe you trade in Devontae Graham and Doug McDermott are both there, and then Malachi Branham, who I really expect to have a big year. Uh, like I said, you know, maybe it's Keldon Johnson, maybe it's uh, Jeremy Sohan, but I feel like one of those guys in the starting lineup probably ends up coming off the bench, and Zach Collins get, gets moved up to the starting lineup. Uh, we'll see. They also have uh, Mamu, they have Blake Wesley, so they got a lot of guys that, you know, you, you could get some playing time. You could make a legit case for them to be getting P.T., uh, but yeah, this this franchise has changed overnight. With Victor Obanyama coming to town, there's never really been anything like this before in NBA history in terms of getting such an elite prospect to come in, and he's going to change the fortunes of the Spurs overnight. Will they be a playoff team? Probably not. There's a chance, though. There is a very good chance this team could squeak in to the play-in spot. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button, leave me a comment down below, and hit the subscribe button as well as turning on those post notifications as it really was out in the YouTube algorithm. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video.